And almost as soon as he heard my voice, he just stopped shaking and sits up. And I'm, I'm scared because he was a quiet emo kid. And in a school setting, it's common knowledge not to anger those types. He turns around and stares bullets at me. With tears in his eyes, he looks at me and says, Oh yeah? And you look like you <laughs> There's a lot of terminology I heard growing up in the South that I didn't realize was weird until I left the South. Like, this is a pecan. This is called an I, not a burner. And fixing means I'm going to fix something. But fixin means I'm about to do something. The last two letters matter. And since we're on the topic of Southern terminology, it's kind of like the N-word. I know the title says growing up black, but it really could say growing up looking exorbitantly different from everyone in your relative vicinity. But that title's long, and I probably can't spell it. Oh. You just like me for real. I'm not gonna completely bag on my upbringing. The South does have some charm to it. There's something charming about seeing cows on the road. There's something charming about how the food clogs your arteries. Southern hospitality in general is charming. Off the strength of me spending most of my life in South Carolina, one of the main compliments I get is how polite I am. I mean, that's just the culture. The South is valid. But growing up black in the South, it's like accidentally walking into the girls' locker room and not leaving. Oh. He just like me for real. Like, I feel like I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm here. Like, I'd be with a group of people and then someone would say something that just reminds me, oh yeah, <laughs> y'all don't like me. I remember in middle school, I was roasting this emo kid I'll name Shane with my white friend I'll name Ben. We're all joking. I had one roast, but Ben was definitely putting in the most work, eventually making Shane almost cry, which as someone who was bullied, you can't do that. You're, you're not supposed to give the bully the reaction he wants because when Ben saw Shane's lip quiver, man, that was raps from there. Ben starts going crazy, man. Bro, look at your emo ass, bro. If you don't get that big and king, what's my big and queen? Like, he's definitely using 100% of his brain to come up with these jokes. Mind you, I stopped when Shane started crying because roasting someone who's going <laughs> just, just feels wrong to me. But then I thought of a joke. And if there's one thing about Yo Yo 808, I'm gonna always get my joke off, bro. <laughs> the joke I said was stupid. I say something like, yo, you look like JoJo from Horton Hears a Who. And almost as soon as he heard my voice, he just stopped shaking and sits up. And I'm, I'm scared because he was a quiet emo kid. And in a school setting, it's common knowledge not to anger those types. He turns around and stares bullets at me. Oh. He just like me. With tears in his eyes, he looks at me and says, Oh yeah? And you look like you swing from trees. And he turns back around and I'm just like, that's it? Like, like you're not gonna make a joke about Ben? I, I didn't realize Friendly Fire wasn't on. Like, the dude got roasted by Ben for 10 minutes and only managed to muster a singular black joke towards my quiet ass. Like, like why did he come up with that so fast? Okay, bro. Things like that would happen and it would just remind me, oh yeah, <laughs> y'all don't like me for real. But the argument could be made. I was asking for it. I had it coming. We should have been roasting him, but... Man, I caught unnecessary strays too, man. I mean, this other time I was drawing in class and I look over and see this kid drawing Roxas from Kingdom Hearts right next to me. And this got me excited because I was a nerd in middle school. I don't remember what I was drawing, but it was definitely either Goku or Sonic or something. I tap him like, bro, are you drawing Roxas? And he's like, yeah, I am. What? Is that Sonic? And after that, we just start talking about video games and stuff. And I pull up my phone to show him my art. Dude, that's so cool. Let me let me show you some of my stuff. He then whips out his phone to show me his art. He unlocks it and I see a group chat of some sort. It had to have been like Discord or like Kick or something. He leans over to show me and I see nothing but hard ERs in certain World War II German symbols. It was like 10 people in there too. Bro, was the Nick Fury of racism. I got to put it into perspective, bro. It was 2012, AKA the Harlem Renaissance of internet racism. I mean, Call of Duty lobbies was going crazy. I funny. I funny, bro. This chat was popping. And I look over at bro expecting him to explain himself, and he is just casually swiping like I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. Oh, shoot. My bad. Uh, hold up. Ah, here it is. This is my art. And then he just starts showing me his art like I didn't just see the Prejudice Patrol in his phone. If that's not a stray, I, I really don't know what it is. Like, I've also had people cross the road to not walk past me before, but you're more of a coward than a racist. I don't care how much I dislike you. I'm not looking both ways and jogging to avoid you. A clansman could be walking in front of me, and I'ma still go. Why? because they fell off. I know they put up 2016 Golden State numbers back then, but now the only time I see them is on YouTube interviews, 
with black interviewers like so not only are you cordially talking to your ops but you also got the same clout levels as a drunk girl on sixth street gang t up. i mean maybe if your inky blinky pinky ass uniform was more efficient you would have put up better numbers who was in a room cutting holes in bed sheets like oh yeah lester's gonna love this one man if you don't get your dunce cap built down is that a g -g 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 ghost ass fit out of my face? And who? Oh, I'm getting hot now. Who thought to call y'all wizards, bro? That shit is goofy. But now I live in Austin. It's still the South, but it's not the South. It's a different brand of racism. It's less ill, don't touch me, and more can I touch your hair. You know what I'm saying? I remember this one time I was on a date with this girl. I pick her up and we get to the topic of music and I ask her what her favorite genres are. And with enthusiasm, she says rap. So I ask her who her favorite artist is right now. And she says Lil Baby. So I connect her phone to my Bluetooth and tell her to DJ. I start driving and I'm, I'm not hearing anything. So I glance over and see this girl is looking up Lil Baby in Apple Music Search. But I'm like, if Lil Baby is your favorite artist why don't you have songs saved so i jokingly ask her that and her response is literally well i've never listened to him to be honest i just wanted to relate to you bro she never even asked what my favorite genre is it's rap but i listen to other things too like the icing on the cake of this whole situation is i don't even listen to little baby like that the south is funny man but i just be catching mad shots oh he just like me for real. Fuck you, yo, yo. Fuck you, yo, yo. Let's hop on this shit. One, okay. two, one, two, three, let's go, let's go. Kudos. Back, back in the day, I was drawing in class, but now I make money off two dollars. Racks in the bank and I'm chasing the cash. Got a mill on my mind and I'm too close. And these niggas corny like fruit toast. The only thing on my mind is the money. If you try to take it, I take out my chopper and it's gonna kick you like judo. Huh? Give a fuck about a nigga and what he gon' say. 110 on the dash and I swerve in the blanks. I got a shorty and she from the bank. She don't even know my name, but she still giving face cause she know I got bank. And I know she gonna chase cause I got an MS of Capital One, no way. I took the wrong road, it was taking the toll, but I swerved out. Since a teen, a nigga always weighed pros, not surprised that it worked out. Listen, Big Body P might be racing the whip. I'm getting tired of chasing the shit. You would think that I sold Illuminati the way I get straight to the bitch. Give me straight to the bitch. Kudos. Back, back in the day, I was drawing in class. But now I make money off two dollars. Rats in the bank and I'm chasing my cash. Got a mill on my mind and I'm too close. And these niggas corny like fruit toast. Only thing on my mind is the money. If you try to take it, I take on my chopper and it's gonna kick you like judo. Kick you like judo. Huh? Love and lust, I can tell that the feeling that you got is pseudo. That's tough. Big so, no so what? That's a duo. Lately been needing my kudos. I got some niggas around me like Sasuke and I might pop off like I'm Dugo. Play on mucho. Ooh. Gaston County where I grew up I hear niggas turn to you Same boat when them tools start to screw up Neptune, I got blue veins Blue checks came when I blew up Hydrate, why can't my taste But I still came and went to 